Right now on NBC 26 live at 10, two of Packers greats honored tonight. Donald Driver and Mark Lee inducted into the 47th annual Hall of Fame. Plus, President Trump still questioned about Russia while hoping to shift focus on defense, health care and taxes. And a Shano family desperately trying to find their stolen puppies tonight. How law enforcement are now intervening. Good evening, I'm Regina Ahn and thank you for joining us. The Green Bay Packers honoring two great football heroes, receiver Donald Driver and cornerback Mark Lee are inducted into the Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame. The Packers organization honoring the two at the 47th ceremony tonight. NBC 26 is Sherrod Taylor at Lambeau's Atrium with how it all went down. The Green Bay Packers organization, family, teammates and friends welcome Donald Driver and Mark Lee into the Packers Hall of Fame. Guests remember their contributions to the team. Drafted in 1999, Donald Driver spent 14 years with the team and scored 62 touchdowns in his career. Donald Driver has uh, been, a, been a fun guy to watch over the last couple of years. Um, got a Super Bowl championship in Green Bay, so it's nice to finally see him uh, get his due to get inducted into the Hall of Fame here. He caught a one-handed pass. Uh, right on the 20-yard line right in front of us. It, nobody else could have done it. See, watching him play as I grew up, uh, him playing with Brett Favre, uh, him with Aaron Rodgers, uh, his his glowing smile as a Green Bay Packer. He was, you know, he's a fan favorite. Second round pick in the 1980 draft, cornerback Mark Lee celebrates 11 seasons with the team with 31 pass interceptions. Tiger Green says he was Lee's roommate when they played together between 1986 and 1990. We look out there and we go, okay, Mark, you by yourself on this play. We're going to double on the other side. He said, well, I figured that already. So he always played by himself, never had a lot of help over the top, and we never had to worry about Mark. We knew that that guy was locked down. Ken still says he joined the team in 1985 and says Lee was like a brother. He took me under his wing and said, hey, guys, we're going to play together. we got to work together. And uh, just was a great teammate, a great football player, studied a lot of film, uh, really was a guy that mentored me when I got here. Hey man, I love you. Love you like a brother. It's long overdue. You should have been in here a long time ago. And I'm proud of you. And anything I can do to help you, I'll be there. A lot of people are here this evening, including Mark Lee's high school football coach, who's proud to see him inducted into the Packers Hall of Fame. Our relationship is a 45-year relationship. And I'm just uh, really honored and privileged to be here tonight for him and his family and all the Packer organization. Many have fond memories of these two great football heroes. Keeping you connected in Green Bay, Shara Taylor, NBC 26. And this afternoon, the Packers were working to make sure kids were ready for the upcoming school year. Partnering with the United Way of Greater Milwaukee and Waukesha County's Backpack Coalition, they were collecting school supplies at the Boston store at Brookfield Square. Outside linebacker J. Rohn Elliott even stopped by to lend a hand. Oh, and I always dreamed about giving back, and uh, I was blessed with the opportunity to work with United Way on multiple occasions, and uh, it, it just became natural. Elliot was signing autographs for anyone who made a donation. Well, if you want to eat at Brett Favre Steakhouse in Green Bay, you'd better hurry up. The restaurant is changing its name and will become the Hall of Fame Chop House later this month. The owner says the change is being made to honor the full history of the Packers instead of just one player. Well, switching gears, some areas are seeing some storms tonight. Are we expecting any more tonight? Meteorologist Matt Hoffman joins us now for the latest. Hey, Matt. Hey, Regina. Yeah, we are seeing a few storms out there. If you look to the north in Green Bay, there are a few flashes of lightning. It's currently 74 degrees. Wind out of the south at 8 miles per hour. That dew point, 70 degrees. It was another very humid day out there. Here's a look at the radar showing those storms north of Green Bay. All this activity generally moving to the east and southeast. So we'll have some scattered showers and storms work through as we go through the overnight hours. Nothing severe out there, but there's still that stray chance that one of these could be strong to severe with mainly some damaging winds and hail. We've seen that slight chance of uh, severe weather really shrink and most areas seeing a marginal risk for severe weather. So again, one or two storms still could be strong to severe overnight, but it doesn't look like a widespread severe threat. But these storms will produce some uh, definitely some heavier rain and some lightning. Tomorrow we have some more rain chances. We'll detail that coming up in just a bit. 
Well, a new report out today citing intelligence and intercepts points to what could be an explosive revelation about Attorney General Jeff Sessions. This on a day when President Trump, fresh off a shakeup in his communications team, was hoping to shift focus from Russia to things like defense, health care and taxes. NBC's Kelly O'Donnell has the story. With a cinematic flair and military precision, today Marine One landed on the deck of the new $12.9 billion USS Gerald R. Ford, the 45th president there to honor the 38th and commission an aircraft carrier bearing his name. May God bless and guide this warship and all who shall sail in her. There were tributes to those in uniform and a nod to former Vice President Dick Cheney and Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld, both served under Ford. They look great. They look great. Getting down to business, President Trump urged Congress to deliver on higher defense spending, but added another political plug. By the way, you can also call those senators to make sure you get health care. Before today's pomp and ceremony, the president launched a Twitter blitz. Ten tweets, from demanding action on health care to attacking Hillary Clinton. He even noted that a president has the complete power to pardon, a power famously exercised by the president Trump honored today. You grant a full, free, and absolute pardon unto Richard Nixon. But President Trump insisted the only crime during his administration is leaks against us. Today, his frustration seized on a new intelligence leak involving Attorney General Jeff Sessions. I didn't have, not have communications with the Russians. The Washington Post reports that U.S. intelligence officials intercepted Russian Ambassador Kislyak, telling Moscow he had discussed the Trump campaign with Sessions. A Sessions aide disputed that as wholly uncorroborated and said Sessions stands by his testimony that he never discussed interference with any campaign. The president has publicly described a frayed relationship with Sessions over his recusal overseeing the Russia investigation. But the most visible shakeup happened inside the White House, where a new communications director, Wall Street financier Anthony Scaramucci, is taking over. And still ahead tonight, a Shano family say they're desperately pleading the community for their puppies back after they say it was stolen through the night. But for now, a live look outside our Green Bay cam. What's the weather looking like for the rest of the weekend? Your forecast is next. You're connected to NBC 26 News at 10 with Regina on Matt Hoffman Weather and Chris Barrier Sports. NBC 26 News at 10, keeping you connected. And now... Your Storm Shield forecast with NBC 26 meteorologist Matt Hoffman. Tracking a couple of batches of storms moving across northeast Wisconsin. Nothing severe, but we're going to watch these closely as we head through the next few hours as these storms push on through. Uh, they're definitely producing some heavier rain, some vivid lightning up to the north from the Bonduel area through Morgan and towards O'Connell Falls just to the south. Some very heavy rainfall there, potentially some very small hail and some gusty winds. But again, nothing severe. These are moving to the south and east, so if it holds together, it will eventually work into the Green Bay area. Off to the south and west, we have some more storms towards the Winchester area, back towards Springwater. These will be working into the Appleton area and eventually Oshkosh as we move over the next hour. So we just have a few spotty storms out there. We have a cold front just off to the west. That's what's helping to trigger these storms. A lot of humidity for these storms to kind of work off of. But the severe threat at this point, it seems to be dwindling. We do have a marginal to slight risk for severe weather across the area. So maybe one or two storms could become severe uh, for a little bit. but. Overall widespread severe weather event uh, not expected through the overnight hours. But these storms will definitely produce some heavier rain and vivid lightning at least, along with some very small hail and gusty winds. 74 degrees in Green Bay, that dew point, 70, very tropical air mass in place. 
helping to fuel those storms out there this evening. 75 degrees right now in Appleton with a dew point at 66 degrees. But we are going to see those dew points come down over the next couple of days. By Monday, it's going to feel much more comfortable across northeast Wisconsin. Temperatures this hour are at 75 in Clintonville, 76 in Watoma, 75 in Oshkosh. It's 70 in Kewanee and 68 degrees right now in Mountain. Those dew points are very humid, but they will gradually be going down over the next 24 hours or so. Here's a look at Skycast. So we'll see the chance for some storms through the overnight, maybe one or two storms on the stronger side. We'll watch that closely. But other than that, we'll start off quiet tomorrow morning. But then as we get towards the middle of the day and then into the afternoon, some pop up showers and thunderstorms possible. Those will dwindle as we head into tomorrow evening. Mostly cloudy skies through your Sunday night and then Monday increasing sunshine, less humid and cooler highs on Monday only in the 70s. For tomorrow, with one or two storms, we could see the possibility that they are severe, only a marginal risk for severe weather. So we'll watch any storms that do develop tomorrow, but not a lot of severe weather is expected. Here's a look at tomorrow's planner. We are going to be talking about temperatures warming up into the upper 70s to right around 80 degrees. Still pretty muggy with those temperatures in the upper 70s for tomorrow to right around 80, but then it turns less humid as we head into Monday. Highs on Monday only in the 70s. Your forecast tonight, some storms out there, lows dropping down into the middle 60s. Tomorrow, some spotty showers, a few thunderstorms, mainly in the afternoon and around the middle of the day. And then we dry out for Monday, Tuesday, next chance at storms later on Wednesday. So right now the severe threat overnight doesn't look to be too big out there, but we're going to still watch any storms pretty close. Yeah, what a relief. A little bit drier is better. I mean, the humidity makes it feel so much hotter, right? That's so true. And yeah, this week it does look like a drier week overall. All right, Matt, yeah. thanks so much. Well, coming up, a Shano family asking for the public's help tonight after they say three puppies were stolen through their night. A Shano County family say they're in deep sorrow tonight after three black Labrador puppies were stolen from their yard. Pamela Dahlman says she came home from work on Thursday night to feed the 12 puppies, but was missing three of the only black labs named Zeke, Daisy, and Ruger. You see there on your screen. She says the puppy pen was shut, but their barn door was open, and it was two males and one female. Dahlman says the puppies are only five weeks old, and today was the day people were able to meet and greet their puppies. The only puppies available now are yellow and one black runt. I ask everybody, please, if you're going to take any kind of puppy that is for sale in any way, shape, or form to see its parents because we have a very sad mother and family looking for these puppies. And I can't thank everybody enough on Facebook and everything else for sharing our story, trying to help us find these, bring these puppies back home because they're needed and they're loved. If you have any information on these puppies whereabouts, you can contact the Shano County Sheriff's Department. Rock the Block brought out about 500 volunteers for over 30 projects, revitalizing a neighborhood in Winnebago County today. Volunteers fixed up a block on Doty Island West, replacing roofs, windows, painting siding, leveling porches, and even removing vegetation. Many say it's a rewarding project to see all of the hard work pay off. Well, coming up in sports, the Brewers hope to snap their losing streak. And we'll take you back to Lambeau Field for the Donald Driver and Mark Lee Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Stay with us. And now, NBC 26 Sports with Chris Barrier. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, the Green Bay Packers inducted the 154th and 155th members to the very exclusive club, Donald Driver and Mark Lee. Welcome to the Hall of Fame. Both Driver and Lee were inducted tonight with a ceremony at Lambeau Field, and what a deserving honor for both guys. Donald Driver is the Packers' all-time leader in both receptions and receiving yards. He spent his entire 14-year career with the green and gold before retiring in 2013. Meanwhile, defensive back Mark Lee had to wait 26 years to join the Hall of Fame, but tonight the wait is finally over. And it's a dream come true for both guys, especially Donald Driver, who went from the seventh round draft pick that many thought would get cut back in 2009. And Driver remembers that moment quite well. Seventh round, about to get a first round contract. I'm about to be making money. Ron gets me in his office. He said, listen, there's not one person that believes you're going to make this team. But I do. He said, so, 
I need you to go out there and I need you to work and I need you to prove everyone wrong. And I looked at him and I said, for real? <laughs> Not one person think I'm gonna make this team? <laughs> tonight, tonight is our night. We're in the Hall of Fame, baby. We are in the Hall of Fame. I love that story. From a guy that didn't think he'd make it, to the all-time franchise leader in career receiving yards and receptions, take a look at those numbers for Donald Driver. Over 1,000 yards in seven different seasons with the Packers and over 10,000 in his career. Fellow inductee tonight, Mark Lee, had quite the career here as well. 31 interceptions, that's second most in franchise history. And if you want to hear more from these guys, you can watch the rebroadcast of the full ceremony tomorrow right here on NBC26. Since the All-Star break, the Brewers have lost not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six games in a row. At some point, you got to say, enough is enough, right? Maybe that's tonight. A few cheeseheads in the city of brotherly love to watch the Phillies and Brewers. Ryan Braun back in the lineup after missing three games, and his presence was noticed. Top of the third, Braun takes one the other way in the corner. Drops fair in right, Brett Suter scores. Eric Thames is on his horse. He gets waved around, and he'll beat out the throw at the plate. It's 2-0 Brewers, thanks to that man. Braun back at the plate in the fifth, and he's raising the stakes. A double is nice, but a home run is just that much better. Braun goes 3-for-3 three three with four RBIs and a stolen base. It was 8-1 to one at, at one point, but in the bottom of the eighth, uh-oh, uh oh, that, that's not good. That's not good. Cameron Rupp. It's a three-run bomb to right, and just like that, the game is tied with a losing streak on the line, top of the ninth, calling the pizza man because Domingo Santana delivers, and it's still hot. An RBI single down left. Wasn't easy, but the losing streak is over. The Brewers win tonight 9-8, to eight. and I'll leave you with this. Third round of the British Open, South African Brandon Gray set a new record for lowest score in any round of any major championship ever. Eight under par for a score of 62. He climbed 40 spots in the standings to fifth place, but the leader remains the same after day three. And that's Jordan Spieth. Another five under round of 65 for him, matching his score from the first round. He's 11 under total heading into Sunday, three strokes ahead of second place Matt Kuchar. That does if you look at sports. We'll see you tomorrow for Sunday Sports Rewind. Up next, we'll take a final look at the weather for the rest of your weekend. You're watching NBC 26 live at 10. Stay with us. So we are expecting a little bit of storms tonight, but not as severe as we thought. No, it won't. It, it, there's still the possibility okay. that one or two could be on the strong to severe side, but mostly these are just going to be producing some heavier rain, some lightning, maybe some very small hail and gusty winds. Starting to see that stormy weather move into the Appleton area before long. That storm north of Green Bay will start to push into Titletown. Tomorrow there will be some spotty showers, maybe a few thunderstorms that pop up, mainly in the afternoon on your Sunday. Highs near 80, still pretty muggy, a lot less humid for Monday with highs in the 70s. Next chance at storms on Wednesday, but overall this next week looking fairly quiet. Looks beautiful. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a great night. Thanks for watching.